Hi, it's almost time for a new month and that means a new set of supplies that I'll be using for all my live videos in March. So today I'm going to walk you through what I'll be using this month, the month coming, and you can grab similar things from your stash or you can click the links down below so that you can shop for the same kit too. Either thing is great and welcome and everybody can do exactly what they like. So let's first have a look at what I'm going to be using and then I'll walk you through any questions that you might have. Okay, so we have got lots of color, lots of rainbow, lots of fun, and this kind of emphasis on this type of blue. So I've got um, Mermaid Lagoon as the highlighted featured ink color this month. So you might already have that in your stash. You might have something similar, or it might be one that you want to add to your collection. I always use the Distress Oxides in the Best of Both Worlds videos, and um, because I find that they're a really easy way into beautiful ink techniques. So that's why you always see them highlighted here and want to make sure it's something that you can dive into really quickly and not be stuck and go, oh, how do I use this? I want it to be nice and fun and easy. Um, these are the Alta New Enamel dots which come in a whole rainbow and then some of different packs and you could grab enamel dots from your stash that are a similar color or you could pick a different color from the papers and if you want to highlight something else and this isn't particularly your color vibe you could swap the enamel dots and the ink to something else from the colors um, that really speaks to you okay um, I recommend if you're shopping kind of every once in a while you might want to look at the Alta New enamel dots and just add a couple every time you order one or two because you can build up a rainbow of these and you get a lot in the pack there's 163 in there so these last a long time and some of the other collections where you only get like 20 or 30 dots you can use them really really quickly and then you're like I have to buy something else where these you can build up a stash and have a whole rainbow at your fingertips paper Okay, starting with Bella Boulevard, this is their You Are My Sunshine collection, and I'm starting with this one called Feeling Sunny, which has lovely patterned rainbows and sunshines, and the B side is a cloud print with cute little hearts on it. Love a cloud print, and I love that color, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so that's where we start this time around. And a rainbow... Um, to set the color scheme. So this is their Shine Bright paper from the same collection. Nice chunky stripe here to show us all the different colors. And if you've got a big ink collection, you'll be able to pull out different inks to match these. And I will be going through that as we um, get to use this kit. And then this is what I call a fried egg flower. So it's a tiny little mini flower with a circle as the center, a fried egg flower. Um, in pink and red on the back, or pink and hot pink maybe, um, and that same lovely, joy-filled Mermaid Lagoon type color. Okay. Then a cut apart that is strips rather than cards. We've had cut aparts that are three by fours and four by six and lately, and I wanted to do something a little different with that. So this one is all borders, and that's what it's called, borders, from the You Are My Sunshine collection again. Um, so you've got suns, hearts, text, stripes, rainbows, yeah, flowers, butterflies. B-side is sunshines, tone on tone yellow. And then this one is called Happy Thoughts. It's a tone on tone pink heart, so you could replace that with anything that is a small repeating pattern. Um, a single color and so if hearts and pink is not your thing you could swap it for something like a turquoise polka dot the same sort of concept would work the other side here is multicolored and it is a polka dot well not a polka dot a dot a random dot and um, with big circles on a white background so you've got something that's nice and crisp and has that whole range of color if I put it next to that rainbow you can see that those colors then show up here and we could even do something like that where you're seeing the polka dots and the stripes together. Yeah. And um, so if you want to swap this out, the multicolored patterns like this, if you're building a kit from your stash, that's where I would start. Start with something like a stripe and a dot that you like together and then build those single color patterns from pieces that are the same colors that you've picked out there. It's easiest to pick the multicolor first than to build it the other way around because then if you've built this single color sheet collection and you have to go to your stash and try to find a pattern that has all of those that you've you've pulled out all in the same pattern that can be really hard whereas if you pick something like this first then you've got a roadmap to go to your stash and say okay i want a green a yellow a pink and a blue and an orange yeah so start with the multicolor 
been a nice, busy, fun pattern with lots of motifs. This one's called What a Day, and um, you could swap this out for something that had different sorts of motifs if these don't speak to you, but um, it's got a really easy to use green polka dot B-side, and then something that's a bit wild and bold and not huge though, because I want to be able to use it in small pieces. So you're looking for a colorful pattern that's small, and um, it can be random or repeating, either would work. Or you could do something where when I use this, you could swap in some stamps and stamp motifs that, um, that suited the theme that you wanted to scrapbook. That's another option there. Okay, different collection here. This is Kid at Heart from Pebbles. Also a multicolor collection, also a rainbow heavy collection. So we've got this one called Get Your Happy On, which is all text. But you'll notice that these colors, even though it's still a rainbow, they're running a little bit more neutral than our big cool toned um, rainbow here. Yeah, we've got more of an emphasis on the red and we've got this tan and um, yeah, and the blues aren't so cool. They're uh, more like a periwinkle this is going toward. But we have navy and I think that navy ends up a really nice addition to the colors that we have here. So the green works well with the navy, the yellow works well with this navy, and the light blue with that navy can even work. I know that the lighter blue here is not the same as the lighter blue here, but I still think those two could work together and be harmonious, so um, there's, there's potential there. So we've got the happy, 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 and navy blue there. So you could sub that with any navy-based pattern that you like, and maybe a text print. Then this is a more classic rainbow look than the other rainbow that we've had already. So this is just plain old traditional colored rainbows in lines. And this one's called Chasing Rainbows. B-side is a mustard yellow as opposed to that sunshiny yellow. Yeah? So giving us some depth and options when we start to layer the different tones. Um, and again, it's a polka dot, so it's really easy to use. This one called Playful, um, which is just a take on a stripe where instead of having solid stripes, you've got scallops. And I love these as, as pieces that we can then cut into different little borders and add little um, edge treatments to. Really nice little finishing touches and I can imagine that we'll cut this and use it on lots of different layouts. Don't hold me to it. I might have another idea where I use half the page at once, but I think I'm going to cut it into lots of different strips. And then, um, a, not quite maybe, let's see. Are they the same? They are actually the same navy. There's a little trick to the eye where this one looks lighter to me because it's got more color on it, but they are actually the same navy blue. <laughs> um, so a floral on this one. Now this, however, is a darker navy blue. This is Simple Stories Happy Hearts collection. This paper is called Lots of Love, and it is a Valentine collection, but I wanted a paper that could be used for lots of different things and doesn't specifically say Valentine, it just says love a gazillion times and has lots of hearts. But it's got um, a darker navy background, it's not black, it is navy. And the few different tones of pink here, um, a little bit of orange. So if I pull back to that Bella Boulevard rainbow, we've got this tone picking up, we've got this tone picking up, we've got that tone picking up. And maybe this orange is kind of a just a lighter tone of this one, lighter shade. So there's definitely some potential in there. You could replace that with um, a something that's kind of multicolored, maybe text, maybe not, um, but something that picks up on other colors that you've pulled out already. And um, there's a light pink with a navy random dot as the B side here. Um, I'm not sure if I will use this side or not. It's a nice, easy one to use for pieces of layering and things like that. Um, great for photo mats because you don't have a, a pattern that takes a lot of space to tell what it is. It's just dots on a pink background. Um, but it's also not a color combination where I go, oh yes, I want that as a 12 by 12. Um, this is quite cool and so I may use more of this side. Same collection here, Simple Stories, Happy Hearts. This is the tag cut apart. So all the A side versions of the tags have bigger designs and then the B sides are all journaling and the journaling lines are really faint. And um, so this is a grid, this is lines, this is plain. 
um, and those, they just kind of rotate through there. Plus, you can also just use the tabs at the top for nice layering, even if you're not going to write on the tag. Okay, could swap any collection of tags for that, by the way. Or you could use a, a die or your scissors and make your own tags from scraps in your scrap basket. Totally options. Now, I'm not sure that we've done a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. We've definitely not done one in a long time if we have done one ever. Um, so I decided that I would put the embellishment and the alpha together this time. So you've got a white kind of ty clean typewriter style um, font here of letter stickers with numbers. And then you've got border stickers, some little phrase bits, and then some accent pieces. That's the Bella Boulevard, You Are My Sunshine again. So we know that's going to match the papers that we've put out already and other embellishment we have this let me just turn this over so you can have a con contrast here so this is the journal bits die cut set from simple stories happy hearts so it's going to be quite lovey-dovey um but not so much that you can't use it for all sorts of things so see like some of these are just dots or flowers stripes there's no reason that it has to be um, super lovey-dovey. But you do have like love note, you've got some hearts, you've got this one with a little XOXO, yeah. So you've got little touches of it, but a lot of the pieces are really easy to layer. Things like this, you've got this plant on a pink label, but if you don't like the plant, it doesn't match what you're scrapping, that's a really easy piece to just layer in like that or any other piece that you want to layer on top, yeah? Um, versatile. So. Like for example, this one, I would look at this and say, I don't know that I can ever see myself using heart-shaped sunglasses, but I can do that and layer it under another piece like this. So I'm not worried that I wouldn't be able to use them yet. So just a quick little flip through of what else is here. There's a couple little pieces in here that are distressed and more like a vintage paper, but a lot of it is clean. You've got a little cassette tape, big typewriter there. Okay, and this journaling piece is quite nice too. So that's the journaling um, die cut set. Now, if you wanted to sub in some other set of die cuts or indeed a sticker sheet, they would work just as well. But you will want some things, if you want to follow along, you'll want some things that have tags and, and tabs and little labels and things like that. Maybe some hearts or a heart punch handy. Um, you could use your label punch too if you've got one of those. Right, then, uh, last couple of things. I added this as an extra if you are into um, making sure that you've got plenty of background. So um, this is always a, an, an optional thing and everything in the kit is optional, but <laughs> um, I've added the 12 by 12 Lots of Love Petite Print Paper Pack from Doodlebug um, and it's 12 sheets of double-sided double -sided cardstock all in these little tiny prints that are just really easy to use. So you've got white and gray in dots and stripes. You've got um, swimming pool, which is gonna work with those blues. Um, buffalo check, you've got wood grain, a floral, and a graph paper. And then their cupcake pink, again, wood grain, polka dot, um, bubble gum pink, wood grain, floral, graph paper, and cherry dot in polka dot stripe, floral, grid, and ladybug red in polka dot with grain, buffalo check. So you could certainly substitute just pieces from your stash where you want to use different things like this for layering and backgrounds. Um, but I really like these particular packs. I've been buying them quite a lot um, over the last six months or so. And um, after, before that, I was just buying individual sheets and I found that I, as soon as I got them, I used them. So I started buying them in the packs that they create with their collections. And what it'll be is that those will be the collection colors in their Valentine Lots of Love collection. But this pack is not specifically Valentine in anything other than that this is the color scheme that we used for the Valentine collection, yeah? So the petite print sets are really, really versatile and they don't have to go with the rest of that Doodlebug collection. 
Yeah, so even if you're not, if Doodlebug is not largely your style, you may find that these are really, really useful. And um, but if you are creating a kit from your stash, then just look for different single colored small prints that you could use as backgrounds, or you can use white and um, just normal white cardstock backgrounds. Um, but I do love a bit of texture. In the February videos, I've used a lot more of plain white, and I am ready for some pattern backgrounds. Um, because it's not that I don't enjoy the white, but I really enjoy the texture and pattern and depth that you get with something like this. So that's a little optional. Now, there's no stencil and no stamp in this month's kit, and there was a reason and then an idea for that. So the reason for that was that just when this kit was about to go live, Scrapbook.com did a sale on um, stamps and stencils and inking <laughs> and everything was kind of really dwindling and all of the things I started to look at were either there were like two left or they were completely sold out. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do now? And then I realized we've never done a month where we really focused on pulling from our stash in terms of stamps and stencils. So that's what I'm going to do this month and I really encourage you to do the same so that we make sure that we get good use out of the stuff that we've already got. So like for example, I have this stencil that's been in my stash and I've never used it. Look how perfect that is. And it's going to be great with that color ink. So I'm going to pull out things like that. I'm going to pull out stamps from previous kits and just stamps that are in my stash. And I really will encourage you to get things um, from your stash that need, just need to come out to play. Um, and then this was a special offer the day the kit went live. So I've got this too. And I think we might do some comparisons this month to see what we think about these products. So this came as a little bundle. And it includes three of the scrapbook.com sponge daubers that just sit on your fingertip and one of the jumbo version and then our classic boopers with the with the domed foam that I use all the time. And um, so yeah, these are new to me. I've not used these before. Pretty much same sort of concept as these, but this has a handle and this is smaller. This is not smaller. This is bigger. So yeah, I'm gonna give those a try because the offer made them such a great price that it was the sort of time where I thought, actually, no, that's worth, let's give it a go. Because that whole bundle was then, I think, cheaper than just buying one of each of those on a normal day, um, I think. So yeah, um, so let's have a little look at the uh, Mermaid Lagoon and a stencil, and then you can set off to either go shopping or um, shop your stash for what you want to scrapbook with this March too. So I've got my card blank here and some mint tape, and I want to leave about the top, I don't know, third or fourth of this section blank where I'm gonna put my sentiment up here. So I'm just gonna, just going to tape it there, and then I'm going to take my wave stencil and run it along here. And I'll tape the stencil right over that. And then also just a little bit at the bottom. Let's have a look at what, what these are like. This is the small one. Now, this lighter color is tumble gloss, and I'm just putting that onto the mat, and I'm going to blend this color out, but I'm using the same applicator. So I want Mermaid Lagoon to be the most, um, most prominent color in this blend, but there's going to be a little bit of the lighter shade Tumble Gloss, and there's going to be a little bit of the darker shade Prize Ribbon. In order to make it blend, I'm going to use the same applicator for all of it. Here's prize ribbon. Now this is the darkest color, so I'm going to want to use 
it the least. <laughs> Otherwise it can take over. And then I reverse to go through the colors. So this is gonna go back to that lightest shade. And I'm just going over the edges to soften it all up. And then back to my Mermaid Lagoon. Of the stencil and then the masking at the top and I'm left with this lovely faded tonal blue wave. So very excited to use that Mermaid Lagoon and add in other colors to make sure I'm using stamps and stencils that I've maybe ignored a little bit with the rest of this kit. And I can't wait to see what pieces that you pull out too. Now, just a reminder that with the Best of Both Worlds, it's the supplies that I'm going to use in all of my live videos in March, and I'm live twice a week. That's Mondays at 1.30 p.m. and Fridays at 9.30 in the morning, and that's both UK time. Um, it's available on the replay anytime after that if those times don't suit you. And you can play along with the exact same supplies by shopping through the affiliate links down below, or you can make a similar kit that's just right for you from the stash that you already have on hand. Or if you have a local store, use the shopping list to go shop there and support them and keep them in business because that's great that you still have one. And, and the whole concept behind Best of Both Worlds is that I put the pieces together and I show you what I'm making so I know that they're gonna work together and I know that I'll be able to, um, to help you build those pages but you're in control. You're not subscribing to anything. You're not having to buy everything on the list. If you see a paper you really like and you want three of that one, go for it. If you see something and you know you won't use it, you don't have to have any of those. You're completely in control. You can use it with your budget and your style and you can mix and match, match what you already have with maybe something new. It all goes and it's all welcome. And the whole idea is just to make sure that we're all still inspired to keep making stuff and telling our stories. I'd love for you to join me this March. So I will see you very soon.